Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy a black man. Hello, my friends and fellow Bigfoot enthusiasts. Welcome to another episode of Bigfoot Today, the show that's all about Bigfoot. I'm your host, Stephen Major, and once again is with me my co-host, Mitch the Man Johnson. How you doing, Mitch? Very well. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to the show. Man, I am too, and I'll tell you, we've got a tremendous guest with us. We yes, have we Will Ulmer, founder of Bigfoot of Stevens County, with us today, who's come down from Colville to share his research and evidence with us today. So we're yes. so excited about that. Yep. And now we're going to take a short commercial break, and we'll be right back. This show is sponsored by Extreme Expeditions Northwest LLC, your gateway to adventure, specializing in guided Bigfoot expeditions to Alaska and throughout the Pacific Northwest and Canada. Welcome back, my friends. And now it's that time where we discuss what's new in Bigfoot. What do you know, Mitch? What's new? A lot of things. Um, one thing that's new is my revelation that what's new in Bigfoot, you have to take in perspective of how long Sasquatch has been around. And any when I'm looking for what's new, I'm my parameters are like last 18 months, maybe 24 months. Um, a lot of things on there, like I said in the first show, it it's from 1960 something. I mean, I want something yeah. more current. So. Um, Yes, so we have some we have some good visual aids. Um, I'd like you to go ahead and pull up. Oh, that's right. You you've got some stuff to share today. Give yes, me I do. A second here, let me uh, pull that. So up. anyway, that's the problem with with when you're trying to find what's new is really seeing what's new. What's your definition definition of? So these we're just going to go right through. First thing, huge news. Huge what's news this? in Sasquatch um, for Sasquatch habitat. Um, this. This, if you don't not aware, has been going, this battle has been going on for 20 years. And it finally came to a conclusion and it's been shut down. And it's just huge. So shout out to all our brothers and sisters in Alaska who kept the fight going, to all the indigenous people of Alaska, um, the native Alaskans, really they kept the fight going. And it's won. It's there's been back and forth, back and forth, but they just stayed the course, and it's it's been won. So the habitat for Sasquatch up in Alaska, in this area of the world, it's still staying natural. So that's Mitch. Mitch where is this at? I'm not familiar with where the it is. 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 If you kind of think of you know Alaska being like this, it's it's um you know it, it, it's on not on the peninsula, but on the um, coastline, the Pacific coast there. I could have had had that, but um, I didn't want to take too much time, but it is right there. There is nothing there. And um, I could talk about it for hours. I've been very passionate about this ever from the first time I even saw of it. Um, but anyway, it's it. The greedy capitalist pigs lost, which is always <laughs> a good thing. One of their biggest arguments were was see, here I go, is, oh, it's going to bring jobs to the area. Oh, shit. There's two people per square mile. How many jobs do you need? It's just, it's an old, tired argument. So anyway, it's staying the same. The native Alaskans didn't want it. The commercial fishermen didn't want it. The sports fishermen didn't want it. Alaskans did not want it. Um, and yet they were trying to push it through. For, because they wanted copper so they could still keep making, you know, disposable um, cell phones. So they're preserving some habitat for the Nantanak and the hairy man. Yes, yes. Excellent. I'm excellent. all about preserving the environment when there's no other benefit. Next thing, our friend Amy Boo. Um, oh, yeah. It, Amy Boo. No, t tell us about that because well, I just heard about that. I, I don't know a lot. I've watched her first episode. Very good. Um, I was going to ask you in this episode, give me one word to describe Amy. You can't, but they, words like, um, you know, very um, genuine, very personable, knowledgeable, very knowledgeable, and experienced. And she has a um, such a um, craving for yeah. knowledge and stuff. Yeah. And um, really encourage everybody to check out yeah. her her show. Um, I think you'll like it. Um, some of you may not, yeah. and that's okay. But at least check it out to yeah. see. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for her. She she's a tremendous researcher. She gets out a lot. Yes. She's traveling all the time. And, you know, we had her as a, as a speaker at the last round that yes. we did. Yes. Learned a lot from her. Well, that's wonderful. <clears throat> yeah. So check that out. Amy Boo's Wild Boo Yonder. Yeah. Excellent. That kind of shows her, her sense of humor, the irony in the name. So. All right. What do we got next? This comes in just today. I'm not kidding today. you. Today. Today. This what we morning. Got here? What do we got here? I, I follow Mount Rainier National Park. Um, they're 
for those of you who aren't in the Northwest, that's a big deal around here. I mean, figuratively, literally. But Mount Rainier National Park, their website, their Facebook page, this was on their Facebook page this morning, these tracks. And they go on to talk about, of course, they're encouraging people to go to, to parks and look at it. One person goes, well, that's Bigfoot. And if you look at the second from the top, I mean, I'm just looking at that going, wow. Um, now, I'm no expert on this, and I think at some point we'll probably have someone about tracks. I don't know what it's called, but when a bear yeah, steps. Yeah, double step. Yeah. Double step, thank you. Right. And then it steps here. Um, but, you know, with all my teddy bears and Winnie the Pooh and stuff, I never paid attention to their feet. <laughs> I didn't think it would display toes like that. But, um, no, I don't know if it's. So I mean, Mount Rainier today. Yes, they posted just today. And, um, yeah, I don't know. And then my question is, aren't bears hibernating? I mean, at this point, I, I don't know. Yeah. But if they are, then I wonder, well, then what made those? Yeah. Um, then if you go to the next um, um, Well, that's line. interesting. Yeah. What do you got here? The, well, that's just another um, of the same thing. It was just a close, more close-up picture. Um, I, miss, I don't know. Okay. But anyway. Mount Rainier today. Yes, and they didn't say what it was or what it was it wasn't. Yeah. Um, they just said, "Well, look at," and they were used in, as an example of tracks you can find when you get up in the up in the mountains. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, you know, they have a lot of people go missing up around Mount, Mount yeah. Rainier. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. When I was in the service, uh, I was stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington, in '84 and '85, and uh, the training area for us in the infantry it was very, very large, and we were out on what's called an R tap. It was a great big uh, division-sized maneuver out there. And uh, there was a uh, squad of rangers that actually ran into a Sasquatch wow. at an encounter up on the base of Mount Rainier. Okay. And, uh, I didn't witness it. I just happened to be in the CP, the battalion CP at the time, and I heard it, heard the discussion over the radio about okay. it, which is pretty interesting. And then I did some digging. Uh, there's been a lot of sightings historically around Fort Lewis uh, Military Reservation in Mount Rainier. Okay. With, with military people claiming to have sightings and encounters on the base, but yeah. I never ran into anything the whole time I was there, but a couple of bears. But it's quite a large, I grew up next door to that, and it's quite a large base that a lot of it is not populated because when you want to, you know, yeah, practice your ordinance, you, you don't want homes to well, be Well, yeah, that's the so. other thing. Um, now, this last one, I just came this? I just came across just this last week. Um, if you want to check them out, which I suggest you do, go to YouTube and then... Um, look for driftless um it's about recordings and stuff um the one that we're seeing here um is it's very well done it's maybe 25 minutes in length at the very first part of it he lays out three different times where you he believes it's clearly to, to him um sasquatch and then he plays a 25 minute and it kind of goes to what Stephen and i have a problem with is that's great. You have a two-second clip of Sasquatch. Can you show us what's before and what's after? What they perceive to be Sasquatch. Well, that's true, too. Yeah. And he does a very, very good job of it. And you can just sit there, and you hear the noise and noise. And then in his video, as he says, okay, here, coming up is the first sound. And, and you can watch it. You can listen to it. Um, he's got some other videos on there, too, that I haven't had a chance to look out. But um, I think it's well worth your time, if you're interested in the subject, to at least check it out um and he's got a lot of followers so anyway and this the one i'm posting there was posted in september of um 2019 so and uh, not too long ago in my world yeah, yeah. so anyway that's kind of what i have for what's i have other things but we're gonna wait for next episode for that well interesting we'll check that out you know and uh the only thing that i have new to announce today is uh the boys from the Irish Bigfoot Research Organization have their second film coming out. And we were actually going to do a, a, a film review, and I wanted to do their first film, uh, The Walking with the Wild Man. You know, I, I really never thought about Bigfoot in Ireland until these guys came on the scene and did their first film, Walking with the Wild Man. And I got to tell you, I really loved the film. It was fabulous. Some of the best cinematography ever. Ireland's a very beautiful country. And I really appreciated the soundtrack, so I'm really excited to see their new film, uh, The Wood Rose, Walking with the Wild Man 2, um, which I understand is going to be out, I believe, on Amazon and a couple of other sites here just in the next couple of days. So keep your eyes out for that. 
And other than that, that's what's new in Bigfoot today. If you have some news that you'd like to share with us or a sighting report or anything of that nature, please feel free to email us at info at exnorthwest.com. We'd love to hear from you. And now it's time for a short break before we bring out our guest, Will Ulmer from Bigfoot of Stevens County. This show is sponsored by the Private Money Store Incorporated. They specialize in private real estate lending for commercial or business purposes in Washington State. Well, welcome back, my friends. It's time for me to bring out our guest, Will Ulmer, founder of Bigfoot of Stevens County, a long-term researcher up there. He's got a lot of tremendous evidence to show and talk about some of his research, which is extremely compelling. So let's give a big warm welcome to Will Ulmer. Glad to have you. That's some interesting stuff there. Well, Will, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I always have this first question that I like to ask guests, and because I think that's really compelling to find out what got you into Bigfoot. Whew, I was eight years old. My dad talked about Bigfoot all the time. Uh, before we went on a family camping trip, he would always uh, rent two B-rated movies, Grizzly <laughs> and uh, Legend of Boggy Creek. And oh. both those movies terrified me, and today I still watch them, at yeah. least once a year. And uh, just the whole idea of Bigfoot just stayed in my mind the whole time, and now yeah. I'm doing this. Yeah. And how old were you the first time you saw The Legend of Boggy Creek? Uh, I think I was eight. Eight. Eight years old. Yeah. Yeah, and they're about the same age as me. I still have nightmares about it. It's still the scariest Bigfoot movie, if you ask me. Well, the scene where it, you know, came through the bathroom window, yeah. that still gets me every time. Oh, me Even though too. I'm expecting it, you know. Just... <laughs> yeah, I remember coming home from the theater after watching that movie in my, my bedroom. I was on the top bunk, and there was a little window. I had a window there, and it just scared me to death, that scene. And it hung with me, and I, and I just, I, you know, I didn't want anybody to know it, but I, I couldn't sleep up there on that top bunk right next to that window for, for weeks after that. It scared me, so I slept down on the floor at night. But that, that, that movie had such an impact on me. It, it just framed it, but you know, it didn't get me into thinking about Bigfoot other than being scared. I didn't want to go out and chase Bigfoot, that's for darn sure. <laughs> but uh, anyways, that's great. The, uh, where, where did you grow up? Were you living up north or? Uh, I grew up all over the place, mostly overseas. Okay. So uh, in like the Middle East, that's where, oh. I, that's where I basically grew up before moving back to the States when I was about 16, so. Okay. <clears throat> and then when did you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, did you officially uh, get into doing the Bigfoot of Stevens County, your research and things like that? I started about 11 years ago. Um, one winter I was just, you know, flipping through the TV. It was snowing outside. I turned on an episode of Monster Quest and they were doing an episode of uh, the Washington Bigfoot. And uh, I've always wanted to investigate Bigfoot. But uh, while I was watching the episode, I was like, well, I'm already in Washington State. Why not? How hard could it be, you know? Yeah. So I spent a whole year researching everything I could on the subject matter before I ever started doing any kind of field work. Then when did you officially get out? Was it? Uh, I can't remember the date, but uh, about 11 years ago. About 11 years ago, yeah. you got out, and this was up in Stevens County. Yep. And, I, and I'm coming across as a complete skeptic, you know, because yeah. uh, it's still hard to believe that there's something that big running around in the woods. And I thought I could just go out and, and disprove some of these claims that people were experiencing oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, I'm still have that mindset, but uh, I'm left now with more questions than answers right now. Yeah, well, uh, you know, so am I, so am I. You know, I've only been doing it like uh, since uh, 2014, but yeah, more questions than answers at this point in time. How long was it when you first started out that you ran into, you know, some of these tracks you have and things like that? Well, this has been over 11 years worth of work. Yeah. Um, the first two years was pretty slow. Yeah. Um, I wasn't getting anywhere. I had no idea where to look. And that's when I created my community Facebook page to try to touch base with the local community yeah. and see if there's any reports in our areas. And that, about six months later, the reports started slowly coming in. And now I'm, you know, I have hundreds of reports now and I'm still getting reports yeah. 
you know, a few every week. Now, when you say hundreds, is that hundreds in Stevens County, the area where you're most in? of it is is in Stevens County. Some of them, Ponderé, yeah. uh, Ferry County. I'm, I'm getting reports, you know, from Alaska, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm passing those reports uh, up to Beans up there in Alaska. Yeah. So. Alaska Watch, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have Beans on the show here pretty soon. That's good. Great. Um, you've got a number of tracks here. I do. You brought today. I would, do. And you also have a number of visuals and things that you would like us to take a look at. Where would you like to start? You've got wherever so much. you want to. Well, tell us about uh, your tracks here. And uh, you've got man, that one. What's that's an odd looking one. Which one? This one right here. Yeah. Okay. These are the first tracks that I found. These were in the little Ponderé Wildlife Refuge, and uh, these are 14 inch tracks. And uh, this is these are both from the same track line. It's a left and right foot. This one actually has only three toes. Oh, now okay. What's interesting about this trackway is the right foot. It looked like the the, the individual was walking on on the side of its foot through the whole whole way, which I thought was a little odd. And then on these tracks, three toes. So I'm not sure if he's crippled. Or can you, I'm sorry, can you one? hold that one up uh, yeah. for the folks so they can see that? Because that is an odd looking foot. It is. Yeah. There's some sliding in it because it came out of the creek, walked along the edge of the creek, and then back in. Wow. Man. And these were at the same location, same time? Yes. See, I don't, I don't know, but have we ever had that? Where we've had both the left and the right no, foot? No, I'm very fortunate. I've never I've come not, across that. And it makes total sense that if, you know, one foot's hurting. You're you're going to be limping, and that's going to yeah. throw off your your track. So now with the very interesting with the deformities in here. You know, I mean, it could have been injured. Yeah, could be a side effect of inbreeding. You know, birth defects. I don't know, but yeah, it, I find it interesting just how different tracks can be depending yeah. on the area. You know, um, <clears throat> some big wide ones, some little small ones, but. Uh, you know, that one makes me think of the Cripplefoot track. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Yeah, in fact. Out of Bosberg. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a, uh, I'd like to throw up a, a shot of that Cripplefoot track. I thought I had it here so the folks could take a look at it. And, and you know, Bosberg's only about 20 minutes from me. Right, I was going to, since you brought well, that up. Bring up the, tell us about Bosworth. Yeah. Have, have, oh, you, I'm not a Bigfoot historian, but uh, there was over a thousand tracks found up in yeah. Bosburg in 1969, I believe. Yeah, I think it was. And uh, yeah, I, I guess some of them were, the foot was actually crippled. Yeah, on this photo here, I, I hope you, I hope you all can see this photo here. He's uh, one of the gentlemen's holding up the, uh, the kind of twisted looking foot there, which uh, brought about the name cripple foot. But uh, that was in 1969. I did a, a fair amount of <clears throat> reading about that. And uh, they spent a, a lot of notable researchers at the time spent a significant amount of time up there. And there were a number of slidings of it, too. Um, but that's, yeah, right in your neck of the woods. So have yeah. you spent some time in Bosburg? Um, I've only been through the area. There's not much there. Uh, yeah. There used to be a town, but pretty much it's like one building and a cemetery. Yeah. You know. Is that is this did the uh, Bigfoot Cripplefoot cause the town to disperse? Uh, <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> um, but I mean, the story continues because uh, when they were following these tracks, they went down towards the river, yeah. and uh, supposedly a border patrol agent found other tracks on the opposite side of the river. I so, read that. That's right. So maybe it swam across the river in what December? Yeah. So. Yeah, interesting. I've never been up there, but I'd like to take it. But I'm still getting reports out of Bosburg. Still getting reports. Yeah. It, since we're talking about reports, what's the most recent report you've got, time-wise? Have you got anything in the last couple of months? Most recently was last October. Last last October. Just this, this, last, this Yeah, this last, last October. October. And whereabouts was uh, that? A motorist was uh, driving southbound on 395, just north of uh, Loon Lake, Yeah. and uh, saw a large upright figure coming off the road and uh he said by the time he got near it it's all dark standing very tall near one of the signs there yeah. and uh he said it, it kind of turned and turned its head or whatever and looked at him that's when his headlights hit the eyes 
And he described it not really as an eye reflection, but more like an eye glow. They were bright white. White. Okay. And uh, he eventually sent me a picture of him standing by the sign and said, you know, the creature was, you know, much taller than him, you know. So we estimated about uh, maybe eight feet at least on this thing. Now, did it stay in uh, standing on the side of the road when he came by it? Or? Yes. Um, he said it just turned as soon as, you know, his headlights hit it and he yeah. went by it. But what, what the interesting thing about that story is most people describe these things as big, bulky, yeah. you know, the classic Sasquatch looking appearance. He described it as, you know, all the description, you know, the, the height, the hair, the, the color, the eye shine, but he said it was skinny, 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 which those are the little details that I like because they, they're out of the norm. Yeah. And, uh, I eventually went out to that area, searched around myself. Uh, I didn't find any tracks. I mean, it had just been raining the last few days prior, but, uh, as I was out there, a hunter was coming out of the woods at that area. So him and I are just chit chatting a little bit and he said he saw something 30 minutes before I showed up running up the hillside. So he took me in, showed me the location and it was about a hundred yards from where this guy had his sighting. And, uh, the sighting happened on Saturday night in October and he was camping just up the road from that location and heard vocalizations Ooh. from the same direction. So I went down to investigate one sighting yeah. ended up getting even more reports. Yeah. Was there any significant track way? I anything? didn't see anything. No. no, nothing there. No. Ah, wow, man. Yeah. The recent, very recent. What, uh, what can you tell us about this second set of tracks you've got there? Well, this one was up around, this is up uh, above Northport, Washington. This is a 16 inch Holy track. Holy moly. 16? 16 inch track. There was a total of seven of them crossing a logging road up there. And we were camped about probably maybe five, 10 miles from the Canadian border. So that, now that is a big foot. Now we did hear, <laughs> vocal, we did hear vocalizations in that direction from our camp. And the next day we hiked up and found a series of tracks. So you said there were seven tracks, seven tracks. Were they, were they all of that size or did the little ones follow? I mean, it was all the same size tracks. Okay. Uh, the step was about step from the left to the right foot was about six feet wow. between steps. Wow. That and is, yeah, now that is a big foot. Now this next track is an eight, about 18 inch track. And this is what we casted up at uh, Sullivan Creek. That's your casting from Sullivan Creek? Yes, it is. Holy moly. Can you turn it? Let me take a look at that. That's a big boy. And this is just this year. <laughs> Holy moly. There's definitely a big, big boy running around up there in Sullivan Creek. Yes, it is. Wow. Now, the chances of us, you know, coming across these tracks, I have to give credit to the campers that were camping up there that came yeah. and gave us that report yeah. of hearing whistles. So, Yeah, we can thank uh, Dr. Robert Alley for that. Yes, yes yeah, we can. That, that was a good move. Uh, that was a good move. What, what would you say outside of the tracks is the most significant piece of evidence that you may have found? I mean, tracks, to, to, I, I put a lot of weight in tracks. Um, I really do. You know, there's vocalizations and there's a lot of other things, but in particular to you, what do you think the, the most significant evidence is that you may have found right now that you want to talk about? Uh, probably vocalizations and, well, basically, you know, all I'm finding are tracks, you know, every so often. Yeah. Um, we get more vocalizations than we do tracks. And uh, our area seems to be very active for screams and that kind of nature. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had a, any visual sightings of something that you thought was you i've know, had a few visuals i can't confirm exactly what i saw but the figure was upright and just hauling butt through the tree line i did see long arms i saw messed up hair you know yeah but it was definitely upright and, and that was a daytime daytime sighting. daytime yep daytime sighting just uh north of north of colville a little bit well the the first sighting i had was up uh in ferry county ferry county yep and you get around I try to. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, you, you you have a number of things here that uh, you wanted to share. 
Should we take a look at some of those? Sure. Right? Now, what would you like to start with? Anything you want. Okay. Let's see, what do we have here? Now, this is a track. There was three of them all total. This was a, in an area that I call uh, Sasquatch Alley. Um, I was coming down the trail, checked out this little marshy area, and I came across this track, which was the best one out of the three. And the creepy part of it was it was slightly raining and the water was still pouring into the track. So it was made within minutes of me getting there. Wow. And yeah. And I'm, that's, I'm good to see that you uh, put something in there for scale. Yeah, you always want to put something in, in, in the scale for a track. I always forget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to think about that a little bit more. Now, you said you mentioned Sasquatch Alley. What is that? It's just a mountain range that I've, uh, that I've uh, kind of come across. From all the reports I've gathered, they've all been – I look for, for patterns in reports. Yeah. Um, one report doesn't do me much good. Two, three, four, a lot better. And uh, I try to narrow down those search areas. And I kind of, wherever the, the sighting is, I try to look for the dead center and work out from there of those sightings. And uh, I found a whole stretch of mountain ranges of one single area going straight down from the Canadian border all the way down to Spokane County, where there's just constant activity from the reports and from our own experiences. So I've nicknamed it Sasquatch Alley. Sasquatch Alley. Alley. I like that. I like that name. Okay. What do we got next here? What can you tell us about this? Uh, this is just a, there's random stick structures. I'm not a huge fan of stick structures because yeah. you can't prove that Bigfoot made stick structures. But uh, this is just one example of uh, some trees kind of placed together, forming a pattern. And I have a theory about the stick structures, but I'll wait till we get a little further in. Okay, okay, because I would like to hear your theory on that because my theory on that, and I'll say it right now, is it's overrated. I mean, it really is. The stick structure thing, I have a hard time with that um, because, one, if you didn't see Bigfoot make it, Bigfoot didn't make it. And there's just a rash of people that go out, you know, that are self-proclaimed Bigfoot researchers, and they'll come back from a weekend, and they'll be posting 16 photos of every leaning tree, every, you know. Tree break, everything. Tree yeah. breaks and stuff like that. And it's just, uh, it's really hard to buy. And especially when you've spent, I mean, I've spent a lot of time. I grew up in the woods, you know, spent a lot of time with that. And the stick structure thing, in my opinion, didn't really come into play until about five years ago. Mm -hmm. And and, I th and my theory is one of the reasons it came into play is because nobody has found definitive it proof or evidence that Bigfoot exists yet. And so they have to come up with new theories to keep things going. Well, if I, I can think, interject for a second. Yeah. Their that, bubble gum has run out of flavor. They got nothing new. They got to have something new to talk about. that's what this show about. is about. That's my That's why Will's here. Love to hear I might yours. be able to add some more flavor to that gum. Okay. Good. That's what you're <laughs> here for. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's, uh, okay, what do we got next here? Ooh. Okay, um, this is a juvenile, uh, what, what I'm assuming is a juvenile track. Found this out at uh, Bailey Lake. Back in uh, 2017, I found over a hundred of these tracks, followed them for about uh, probably a little over half a mile, give or take. Um, there was three sets of tracks, uh, which is, this was one of the larger ones. It's only about 12, <clears throat> 12 inches, but uh, this one was about an eight inch. And the next one was this little tiny little guy. A mini foot. And this little mini foot uh, only appeared half the time, but it stayed close to this one, which means yeah. the mm. track would just stop. It would just disappear, which I'm assuming this one picked it up. Yeah. And wow. uh, mm. when it was, when I found the track again, it would run parallel with this one, never leaving its side. And then it just disappeared again when this track came up closer. What time of year did you find those? This would be... September, October, somewhere in there. September, October. It's a little bit cold. Yeah. Yeah, getting there. You know, I haven't seen a, a, a mini track like that since uh, the 2000, I think it was the 2018 International Bigfoot Conference. I didn't know much about mini tracks, and there was a, a researcher there at a table with a bunch of tracks on it, and then he had these little guys. And uh, it, he had little mini foot tracks, which he had gotten off of Mount Rainier. And that was, a, they were little three-toed mini tracks, right about the same size as that one was the first time I ever saw them. So I guess there is some mini feet running around out there. Well, if you ever watch, you know, kids, toddlers running on the yeah. beach, you know, if they step on the slightest little thing, it's like, you know, their leg just got cut off. 
You know, yeah. I'm the same way. If I step on a, a seashell or something, I'm jumping up and down. These yeah. tracks covered a lot of ground and they were walking on some just nasty areas. Yeah. I mean, look at that. I mean, just perfectly stepped right on that stick and just kept on going. Yeah. And there were some jagged rocks in some of these tracks. I've been know? out there. Did, I've been out to that area and whatnot. And uh, to be running around. And this is a wildlife refuge. So this is not an area where people go rec- re- um, go swimming, stuff like that. I mean, it's a wildlife <laughs> refuge. Yeah. So there's no swimming allowed in any of these lakes. Yeah. Lots so. of wolves out there too in there. Yeah. Cougars, everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see, what do we got next here? Let's see. There's another. Oh, another track. Yeah, this is the the larger track that uh, was at Bailey Lake, which is the cast I just okay. just showed. Yeah, can you hold that up again so yeah. face the camera so you get a look at it? Okay, great. And there are dermal ridges throughout the whole foot. Yeah. Right on. Okay, what do we got? What about this one? This uh, same track. Same track. Yep. Same track. Same track. You can see how flat it is. I mean, there's not, there's no yeah, human there's... arch right, showing in it. Right, right. And of course, some people say, you know, uh, go back for one. Oh. Um, saying that, well, the toes, the toes aren't spread apart enough. Well, not all Bigfoot tracks are going to have that toe spread, you know. Yeah. These do, but not all of them. We were following these, and it was like every maybe four or five steps, then the toes were completely spread apart. The rest of the time. They were just normal. Yeah. And I think a lot of people mistake these as human tracks and just disregard. Well, you know, our last guest that we had, Kevin Lou Allen from the BFRL, he, his tracks are very similar to the track castings that you have there. And he happened to have a replica of the Patty track, mm-hmm. Patterson Gimlin. And I, I'd never really seen that track compared to uh, other such tracks that, like he did and stuff. And I looked at it and I thought, wow. You know, the to- the toes aren't splayed out on it. It looks very, very much like what you have here mm-hmm. in that. And, 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 and I thought that was kind of interesting. So maybe it's how they're walking or maybe or maybe they just have different co- foot configurations, you know, foot structure, depending on the environment they grew up in or something like that. But I thought it was interesting because the track looked just it was so clean. And it was- plus, I mean, the, you got to figure what 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 do these things weigh? Yeah. That could play a big factor on those toe spreads okay. as well. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think their age of the Sasquatch. What's that? I don't know about you, the age of the Sasquatch. Because my feet don't look the same as they do when I was 10 years yeah. old. Um, just life. Um, yeah. But one question for Kevin, I'm just, I got to ask is, for all those amateur uh, hunters out there that want to start looking, I'm thinking there's certain times of the year that you find it's more productive. Like where you're... You know, we're doing the searching here in a few months. Good question. The ground's just going to be rock solid. So good luck finding tracks. Is that kind of a good assessment of that? or Because um, like some of these tracks, you said it was just October. Well, it's wet. It's yeah. more conducive to tracks. Well, I can only I can only speak for Stevens County. I can't speak for the whole country oh, and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, our most active time frame from all the reports and from our own personal experiences, the high, the, the, the best time is September. Next time uh, yeah. is October. So the fall period, then it kind of dies off. January is a huge spike. Yeah. And then spring until about mid-June, and then it, you know, it goes kind of quiet. You're going to have to move yeah. up to higher elevations. So I, I know this is that, just, a, just yeah. your opinion. I know you don't have anything to back it up. But what, what is your thought? Because at that time, I'm thinking, does Sasquatch – hibernate are they collecting more food at that time of the year and so therefore i mean well uh, we can go back and forth and speculate as much as we want we just don't know yeah um to the hibernation i don't think they hibernate because uh i have zeroed in on about six locations in stevens county where there's year-round activity year-round yeah so nothing's hibernating out there yeah so you know i've had uh, my most significant sightings in Fleur and all of those things up on Vancouver Island have been in the wintertime. Down close on the beach, um, you know, snow in the mountains, mm-hmm. and they come down low. And then in the summertime, nothing, nothing. Because we stay around the coast and stuff. 
and which supports that that you know they move they go somewhere but they're they following the f- don't you think they're following the food like on vancouver well yeah they they're definitely going come down the in the winter time because mm-hmm. that's where the, the biggest tides yeah. and the, the their food sources and all that kind of stuff well for for steve's from just the reports i've gotten um during the winter time the elevation for these sightings uh, uh from these reports is uh under two thousand feet wow so but f- yeah. through the most the rest of the time between 25 to 4,000 feet of elevation seems like the Goldilocks zone yeah. for these creatures. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Did not know that. What? Okay. What? Well, tell us about this one. Uh, this was a track that we found. I think it was 2015, uh, early April. So there's still snow on the ground. Yeah. And uh, funny story is uh, we took my grandson out just for a little walk. And he thought, you know, everything was Bigfoot related, you know, a hole in the ground. So <laughs> yeah. he, he was calling out all these tracks, you know, and uh, I told my wife, you know, why don't you just take him up that way? You know, I'll, I'm going to go check this creek out. And uh, he's like, I found some more tracks. And I'm just like, yeah, OK, whatever. And then my wife's like, Will, I think you need to come over here and check this yeah. out. And sh- no kidding. He found some tracks, man. So Wait, what does he think of Bigfoot? I don't know. He's eight. He's eight. You know, he's, so. he's not like, you didn't let him watch Boggy Creek, did you? Let I him. did. You did? Uh, I think he was four when I made him watch it. <laughs> oh, so. man, you're getting him going early. Yes. Great. Okay. And this is the same track line. Oh, Tracks cow, are just yeah. moving right up the, the patch of snow there. And I couldn't even stretch my legs out to uh, match the, the stride right there. Wow. Is that it? What have we got? Shouldn't be. Now we have some, get some other images, let's skip down here. Yeah, that's me uh, trying to stretch out between the two steps there. Okay, let's. These two tracks here, that is where they came out of the creek, the the crippled feet. Right. And you can see it's kind of awkward, but I mean, it's a long step. That's at least six feet right there. Man, you see that, Mitch? There you go. Look at that. That's the stride? The step. A step. Yeah, I'm step. Thinking, I'm thinking more, it was more like a jumping step. Okay. How many feet was it? I missed that. Six feet. Six feet. Uh, this is a, just a track that we found dead center in the middle of the road, also in the Ponderay Wildlife Refuge. And uh, we found impressions on both sides of the road. The road was eight feet wide, and this was smack dab in the center so it took one step to clear the road gee okay okay this is uh we were hiking uh sherman peak up in ferry county and uh, we're on the top of the mountain and all of a sudden there's a stick structure which you can totally see right there now my theory is these types of stick structure not all of them but just these types of like tp style have all the ones i've found have all been near running water not, not like a lake or a pond. I mean, running water, running like a stream water. or something like that. And uh, my theory was these things were indicating where you can get fresh water. That's the theory That's I've just never theory. heard before. But when I found this on top of a freaking mountain and the river was like two, three miles you know, below me, yeah. it totally blew my theory away until I walked a few, about 40 yards from that and there was a natural spring coming up. That wow. is interesting. So, I've never heard anything like that before to correlate that. Because I, uh, you know, as far as uh, tree structures and stuff, like I said, I don't put a lot of stock in those because you see so many. But the time that I actually found tracks going up a ravine with tree breaks on s- saplings about six feet up following a stream, and it was probably about 300 yards total that we followed them up there, and it was the stream and the pond and we could see where it got down on its hands and we figured his knee got a drink but the the, the tree breaks were pretty much you know a fence line i right. mean they were consistent they were going up the hill so when you take tracks in broken over tree breaks with water you know what i'm saying there was mm-hmm. you had all the three things there and it made sense to me on that and, and i believe that they do do tree breaks and and according to my father and, and the chief of the tribe up there he said well yeah that's how they mark their territory Mm-hmm. You know, but it was in a straight line as, as best as possible. Well, going up well I think tree breaks and stick structures are way different. Yeah. But uh, 
I believe more in the tree breaks than I do the stick structures. Yeah. But this is just a theory of mine. Yeah, well, that's so. an interesting theory. I'm going to have to think on that one. The next time I uh, run into something that's unusual like that, I'm going to see just how close it is. Well, we don't hear that much. No, I've, I've never heard that before. I think everyone would agree that these are mammals that require water. So yeah. it totally makes sense, the correlation. Um, yeah. I haven't thought of that either. And most of the sightings or the reports that I've gotten have come near water. There's always, yeah. that's, that's when I go into an area, the first thing I'm looking for is not where the sighting took place. I'm looking for the first water source. Yeah. And then I branch out from there. Hmm. This is another possible structure. Um, one tree was broken. The other one was obviously placed there. There was no rot, you know, uh, yeah. there wasn't a lot of storm damage in the area either. So, I mean, those are all the things you got to look at when you're looking at a stick structure. And, uh, we found some impressions through the grass and, and moss leading right through this area. So. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Now that's the track right here that we found up in uh, Northport. That was the clearest one where you can see that big toe sticking off right there. Now, Northport is, is it, that's past Colville? Yeah, it's, it's what? just right underneath the Canadian border. Right underneath the Canadian border. Okay. Still part of Stevens County though. Yeah, okay. Oh, tell me about this. Okay, this is in Ferry County. This is, uh, I was scouting uh, Lake Ellen and I was using my FLIR thermal camera and I was just scanning the hillsides. This was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And I get this large heat signature on the right side first. And it's, it looks like something upright just standing there. And then this little guy to the left pops out from the trees, kind of like walks out and then walks back in and disappears. But this was sitting at about 200, 250 yards from me. Uh, very steep hillside. Yeah. Um, very rough climb to get up there. Um, but two heat signatures that are upright. Yeah. And I've camped Lake Allen a lot, and we've gotten vocalizations, wood knocks. Uh, people have reported having rocks thrown at them, all from this hillside. And this is where in relationship to Colville? Uh, across the river. Across the river, Lake Ellen? Lake Ellen. Interesting. In Ferry County. Did you have some film of this or is this i do have some film but uh this is just a screenshot just, did, did they move around a bit did... the the large one kind of like swayed a little bit but the little guy he, he kind of like walked around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, oh man i'd love to see the rest of that okay this is uh well i've never publicly shared this yet oh so um this is our trip to uh ponderay county i'm not going to say exactly where because we're still actively investigating understood, that area understood. Yeah. Um, so I'm flaring the, the lake and I observed three figures coming down the hillside and I was in complete awe when this happened. I, I didn't even hit record yet. I was just like, this can't be because I mean, they were just coming down the hill like ghosts, you know, three large yeah. figures. So when they got down to the lake edge, I started, started recording the video. This is just a screenshot. And the thermal hit is on the right side. Yeah, there. you can see that. Now, um, I ended up calling uh, Adam Davies over and to confirm what I was seeing, I handed him the FLIR. He saw the same figures. We estimated at a guess at about maybe eight feet um, what the size of these figures were just by looking at the FLIR. We eventually sent Bill over, which is he's that little dot on the far left. Um, oh, I can see. Yeah, just barely. And um, we sent him over like the next day or so to uh, give us a height comparison yeah, and stuff. Scale. So I lined up the two thermal videos together, and you can see that Bill, who is wearing clothes, is not giving off tons of heat. And yeah. he's kind of small. Bill's uh, six foot, and these things, you can see the black line. I'm. I'm going from right, estimating right. where the head is on that thing to Bill's. And uh, Adam and I were pretty close. We estimated about eight and a half feet tall. Holy smokers. Give or take maybe yeah. five, 600 pound figure. You know, you see, uh, uh, I see a, lot, a fair amount of FLIR stuff yes. that, that people throw out, but I, I think this is the first time 
that I can recall. I mean, seeing where you've actually sent some, somebody's gone out and done a scale of it. Um, that's, yeah, that's hugely significant. What time of year was this? Uh, this was August of this year. This was August of this year. You're definitely going back in there, right? As soon as I can. <laughs> now, what's interesting is um, when these figures were walking on the on the uh, side of the lake there, I yelled to Adam to get his butt over there. And yeah. as soon as I yelled, all three of them stopped. And the front one, I could see turn and look at me. I mean, I mean, he's facing me. Yeah. So we're having a little stare down there. And those two stayed there. The, the smaller one, which looked smaller, backed off. And in the video, you can see them both kind of like, you know, you know, trying to like hide behind the tree, but of course I can see through the tree. And the little one just keeps kind of like popping up over the Holy bushes. Holy cow. So. And and when will we get to see the, the actual film? That's up to Marshall. It's up to Marshall. Yes. Okay, Marshall. Yeah, he has all that stuff now, so. Man, I can hardly wait to see that. Oh, this is actually one of my photos that got in there. I had a gentleman who reported an older sighting that was up uh, out of Newport. And uh, he was trying to describe to me what his what he saw. And I said, you know, do me a favor. If you would get on the Internet and find, you know, find a picture of something that so closely resembles the encounter that you had. And I believe it was Yoakum Lake. Does that sound right? Yoakum, yeah. Yoakum, yeah. And this was right there near Yoakum Lake. And this is what he sent me. He said, out of everything he looked at on the Internet, this photo is the best representation of, of what it is that he encountered that day. And now, I thought I, that was interesting. I've gotten two reports out of uh, Yoakum Lake, um, people being chased out of there by something screaming, yeah. snapping trees, and throwing rocks. Ah, so. that substantiates what he had said because he had gone back in there later with his father, and they kind of had the same kind of thing going on. And they were out on, on a boat on the lake, and they were fishing near a shore, and there was... Mm -hmm. There were these dark objects, you know, back in the tree, shaking them and yelling. I don't know if it threw anything at them, but there was some definite vocalizations and it was trying to scare them and, and it did. And, and plus they, there's a lake just, um, I believe it's uh, east of that, yeah. not too far, Skookum Lake. Skookum Lake. And there's a lot, oh, of, there, there's a lot of reports coming out of that area Man, too. I'm going to have to. So Will, so um, I know it's just speculation, but just I just want to kind of know your gut feeling. And if it's 50-50, that's okay too. But what's your feeling at this point in time, after 11 years, does it lean, does Bigfoot lean more to being humanoid or being more primate um, in its habits and mannerisms? Yeah. And um, That's a great question because that's kind of wondering. One of my questions, since you've jumped to that, Mitch, one of my questions to you kind of loose that. Um, it's a, we're a little bit ahead on that, but what is your theory? What do you think Bigfoot is? Well, that's a big question now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. Because you'll get, I think a lot of people... Well, is it an alien? Does it teleport? I've heard um, that. Um, is it, you know, a missing link? Is it human? Yeah. You know, Time traveler? Who knows? Yeah. No. But um, just it, assuming that it's... we. Ha I know, I can tell from you discussing, you're not comfortable answering that question because you're very methodical in your thinking, <laughs> and, not, and I really appreciate you being here for that. Yeah. But um, but maybe you're just but maybe after eleven years you're still undecided and that's okay too. I have theories. I can't prove any of them. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Um, it shows intelligence from what I've experienced. There's definitely intelligence behind the stuff that's happened around our camp and stuff like that, which would show a, a human characteristic. Yeah. But then there's a beastly side of it that. Uh, it's downright scary at times. Yeah. Okay. So I guess uh, give me another 11 years and I'll probably okay. be able to answer that. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Let's see. We got some, you had some other additional things that you wanted to share. How about those Lake Allen house? Yeah. Okay. Vocalization. Let's get into a vocalization. This is Lake Ellen. We're having technical difficulties here. I'm not so while it. Mr. Major's messing around, can you just briefly explain what you were telling me before the show about the um, some of the characteristics maybe of a, of a human voice, the octave ranges versus 
something that appears to be Sasquatch. And there's definitely some characteristics that you've recorded that are not from a human voice, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, well, I don't have an example of a spectrograph, but uh, everything produces a sound wave. And you can measure where that sound is hitting at. And the Sasquatch, if these are Sasquatch uh, vocalizations, they're hitting way higher than most animals and human range as possible. Yeah, cause you have run them, you run, have, I've mm -hmm. seen some things that you've done on yeah. your what YouTube page where yes. you've ran them through there and had some great analysis on this. Let's try this one again. So this is in an area where you found tracks. This is the Lake Ellen. Yeah. And additionally, you found tracks, and now you have some vocalizations here. And that's where that one thermal hit from the hillside. Those howls came from that hillside. So, oh, this was taken at the same time that you got the thermals. No, this was taken uh, several years ago. Oh. This was some of the first best uh, vocalizations I had at the yeah. time. The next one will be yeah. even better. Yeah. Now, now, have you done an analysis of these? You ran them through this. Yes. What What were your findings? They were on sitting that? at about seven to eight hundred vocal yeah. pitch. So. And what did you say a, hum a human is? Ah, uh, well, everyone's a little different. Yeah. I'd have to relook at my notes on that one. I, I don't know. Okay. But it's definitely lower. And there's like there was a variety of sounds to all the recordings. There was like twelve hours of, of recordings for this howl, yeah. and. Uh, there's coyotes, there's everything going off at this lake. Yeah. So I had all that to compare to these <laughs> houses. So, yeah, that would take a while. And we were getting tons of wood knocks and just all kinds of stuff happening on that night. Uh, now, little twin, yeah. It's little twin lakes, let's try this one. Now, at the time, I didn't have the software to, you know, clean up the audio and take out the background noises, you know, the re-boost yeah. that. So I had to send it to a researcher I know who works in the Wenatchee area. He's been doing it for like 20 years, Paul Graves. He was the one who uh, cleaned up that audio for me, and he was really excited when he heard that. Yeah. I think he even uh, played it on Sasquatch Chronicles when he got interviewed. Paul Graves, I've heard that name before. Has he written a couple of books? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. He's in a lot of publications. I know that much. Yeah, because that's a name I've heard before. I just, I've never met the man. I like that. He's one. also a musician. Sings a lot about Bigfoot. Oh. <laughs> He's a good guy. So yeah. I have to ask then, you know, you have this equipment and, you know, and of course, obviously you, you, we play it loud here, but what did it, I mean, was it very obvious just with your own hearing? Um, the audio doesn't give it any justice. Oh, um, really? Okay. What, when that thing vocalized um after paul had uh cleaned it up he basically uh showed me on the spectrograph that there was actually up to three individuals screaming at the same time oh wow wow and um all we heard was one really loud yeah. scream and it was on the hillside just above our camp and it drowned out our fire it drowned out our conversation it stopped everything for the entire night 
Yeah. And uh, we were having action all the way up to that point. And then around midnight, that sucker just screamed out. And I ended up going to bed that night with my boots on and my shotgun ready. Because <laughs> I was, Dude, that I was, was convinced that we were not going to make it out alive. That was creepy. Mm. I'm going to have to listen to that one again. Well, we're getting down to where we're just about out of time. Bummer. And uh, yeah, man, we could go on some more. I, I, it's incredible stuff you've got here with the thermals and vocalizations and man all of these wonderful tracks is there anything um in particular that you would like to share or, or say about your research your discoveries or well if anybody wants to, to uh, follow what i do you can follow me on uh facebook and instagram at bigfoot of stevens county or on youtube at grassman 58 wonderful what and was that what was that on youtube again i missed it grassman 58 okay and just just for you know shit and giggles um this is my own foot. I casted my own foot. Oh, right. oh. hey, <laughs> so, hold that up again. I'll, I'll, okay. So give you an idea what yeah. 16 inches looks like. I mean, that's where my foot sits at. And what size yeah. shoe do you wear? 12. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. That's great. You know, that's fabulous to have a human foot, something to compare the rest of the stuff to. Huge, huge differences there. That's good. Oh. Man, interesting. Well, thank you stuff. for being here. I gotta yeah. say, I congratulate you on your approach. Um, I don't know if it's your intent, but you're you're mirroring what they're doing at university levels as far as modeling and GIS mapping. Just how you're talking, you're yeah. you're taking the basic same approach. You're taking the data and then trying to project what's next. So um, whether it's deliberate or it just happens to be a coincidence, uh, yeah, could, you're just approaching well, it from such a very uh, logical scientific approach I'm well i'm looking impressive. i'm looking for patterns there's yes. there's there's patterns in everything yeah and like bill was saying in his in the first episode you know he wants to connect that that triangle right I, i'm looking at this like a big puzzle all the data that i'm collecting i'm filling the edges of the puzzle first and eventually it's going to form a picture yeah so i'm i'm just trying to uh collect as much information even yeah. if there's no information there's there's still information there yeah and i think patterns are really important and patterns and evidence because one you know you try to find the combination of things that may lead you to a conclusion at some point yeah but ultimately i still think a body's what we need and hopefully we'll come across one well once again thank you so much for coming down okay. and sharing everything with us today and i also you know wanted to let you know that we have a wonderful gift for you Oh, really? For coming down all the way from Colville to be on the show today. And what we've got here is, is a uh, bottle of Death's Door vodka. <laughs> and I figure if b hunting for Bigfoot doesn't kill you, maybe Death's Door will. Sam's Stop and Shop in Spokane Valley, Washington. Stop in and see them. They have the finest assortment of liquors in eastern Washington. Thanks well, again, thank Will. Yep. Wow, Mitch, what did you think about that? That was some. That was incredible. Very good. I'm looking forward. I know the plans are in the works to have him back. Yeah. Um, I want to learn more about the vocalizations. Yeah. Um, just everything. Um, very. But as this is the third show, and each time I'm just left with wow. just a lot of good information. You know, I never thought about. Never thought about the water issue. Um, the, makes know, it's one of those things. Oh, well, of course, but never yeah. thought of it. That was great because you can make sense of it. You yes. know, you can say, well, there, there has to be a reason when you look at the stick structure thing like Will is talking about. I never heard that before. That was brilliant. Yep. You know, why are they doing these things? That That's always been one of my questions. And I'll tell you what, I've never seen such a uh, a wonderful uh, bunch of tracks. I mean, Jesus oh, has got a lot of activity crap. going on there. I mean, there. having a left and a right input yeah. print on the feet, I, like I said, I don't know. If it's out there, I'd like to see it. Uh, yeah. So that would be anyone who's watching. If they know of other instances of that, um, yeah. send it email or something because um, that's very telling, very yeah. telling to me. What wonderful! It's been a wonderful show. Well, my friends, we're out of time, and once again, I want to thank you for uh, joining us for another episode of Bigfoot Today. And as always, be well, my friends. Be kind to one another, and we'll see you again next week. Thank you. There's a fable of a beast that once roamed this land Some say it still exists as a big tall ape man Standing over eight feet tall, quite a sight to see 
Living in the forest is quite a mystery. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, roaming through the land. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, a hairy ape-like man. <laughs> 